Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? Good. It's our last recording of May. It is. I know. This month, this month is like zip by. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a weird month. Yeah. I feel like April just happened, and mm-hmm. then the I, I I almost can break up this month into two sections because I had that whole g- jury duty fiasco go on right. <laughs> <laughs> on top yeah. of some other things. So I'm just like, I'm like, well, we've made it to the finish line. Who knows what June will. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Yeah, I guess I had I had some work travel this month. So which, yeah. you know, it's only like a week or so ago, but it seems like it was much seemed like it was further back. But the cool thing about it, when I, for for our Walking Dead fans, uh, I was I was in Lexington, Kentucky, and uh, Norman Reedus has a has a restaurant there, mm. and uh, so I was actually I think I sent you some pictures of it. Um, mm-hmm. it yeah, it's um, uh, and uh, so yeah, if you're ever in Lexington, Kentucky, go go check out his uh, his restaurant. It's like Norm. Oh gosh, I'm blanking on the name now, but. Um, but he and another co-partner, um, their their names are are part of it, and um, yeah, you should go check it out. That's it's got all kind of Walking Dead like uh, memorabilia right. and stuff, and all throughout all all throughout the place. So it was now, cool. okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Hmm? You have you did you watch The Walking Dead or did you not? I did not. I okay. just but it, you know but it's sort of like you know like one of the topics on our on our run sheet tonight uh it was one of those things that uh due to like black twitter <laughs> like I didn't have to watch it cuz I was like oh I kind of was able to like follow it uh, sort of like them thrones <laughs> so yeah. I was kind of like I was kind of familiar with it without actually watching it <laughs> right 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 I mean I mean when it first came out, there was like everyone was talking about it. Every mm-hmm. those first three to four seasons, and I was late. I think I came on board right before the fourth season started okay. airing, yeah. and then I think I dropped off around the seventh. Um, okay. yeah, and then everyone talks about how like, well, if you had just waited, there were a few seasons later when it got like better again. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never, and I always had it in the back of my mind, oh, I should return, never did. But I swear, when I first got into that, I, I rewatched the first three seasons, three to four seasons, like, over and over and over again, to the point where, like, I knew lines and all this stuff. It was, it was pretty bad. Um, but, but I don't know, there was just, it it was a moment, and I think it just lasted way too long yeah. Um, it, despite yeah. it, people saying it gets better at the end, it's just like, yeah, but still, there's <laughs> <laughs> there's so much other stuff going on that it's it's really hard to maintain a long running show like that these days. But it it, re- it really it really really is. Uh, yeah, and the restaurant's uh, called Nick and Norman's. Uh, his business partner is Nick, and then of course Norman is the uh, yeah yeah Nick and Norman's. That that sounds <laughs> yeah <laughs> like such a such an yeah. um, a I guess 1960s there's, show. <laughs> Nick yeah, <and> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess they have. I guess they're a little. It's a little franchise, and uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So the one of the like I said, if you're ever like to Kentucky, uh, it's just right down the street from Rupp Arena uh, for Kentucky Wildcat fans. So. So so I mean, then let's just use this topic to lead into that topic of yeah. you. You've written on here, and I know nothing about this. Yeah. Um, they are releasing on Hulu a documentary on Black Twitter. Yeah, yeah. It's actually was it was first premiered at South by Southwest, and then it uh, dropped on Hulu this month, uh, May 9th, I want to say. And I had heard about it, but um, I was I was listening to a podcast yesterday, and they were talking about it on that show. Actually, they were interviewing the um, the uh, Princess Perry uh, Penny. Who also uh, did uh, girlfriends and um, and also and sure I'm tired sorry I'm tired a little bit um, the yeah but uh, he was the showrunner of a couple of shows girlfriends one and then uh, another one that just dropped just finished uh, on HBO 
but uh, it's insecure. And um, yeah, so it was on there, and I was watching it, and and that's part of the reason why I'm tired this evening is because I got I got sucked into the vortex of like watching. It's a three part series, and of course, uh, you know, so many things like Dim Thrones, and um, you know, just sort of went through the evolution of how black culture culture and just American culture in general and and how Twitter grew with a lot of things that originated in black Twitter. And so of course black Twitter covers a lot of range of things from the you know funny memes to like the you know the crying Jordan, which I used quite a bit back in the day, mm. to um, you know, of course the hashtags, you know, like the various, you know, black black girl magic and Oscar so white. And and so so the first part was that the second part really gets to some of the more political things as far as the you know, Black Lives Matter and, and the George Floyd's um, issue from 2020 and, and and other things like that. So it was just a really, really cool documentary. And like I said, I got I got sucked in because it was just, uh, you know, it's very it's, it's, it's on Hulu now. Go check it out. You'll you'll definitely enjoy it, especially. When you see when you, when you're watching it, it's sort of like a, it's a truly a, a cool time capsule of like when Twitter was fun, <laughs> right? <laughs> Versus right. the dumpster fire that it is now. Uh, but uh, but also the uh, but the documentary was also inspired by an article written by um, uh, Jason Parham, who is um, who wrote a story for Wired a few years ago about Black Twitter and. Um, and so it, it's just, you know, taking that and, and a lot of the people who originated some of the hashtags and various memes and things that uh, that uh, we, we, you know, we people use all the time uh, were interviewed uh, in, in this documentary as well. So it's pretty cool. Go check it out. Yeah. 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 Sounds sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Um, especially if it can get you sucked in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, I, I'm missing out on those kind of things these days, but yeah. Um, to go from black Twitter to white boy. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Um, my, my first question, though, before I yeah. deep dive into this um, project yeah. or this piece of news is that the the live action Masters of the Universe movie, is this the same movie that a few years ago it was going out that Noah Centineo was was cast as the lead? Yep. Same one. So it's the same. So it's not, he's not replacing um, Nicholas Galat, Galatine, Galatine, Galatine. I always have to remember how to pronounce it because Anne Hathaway press um, during press with the idea of you came up with a jingle that she mm-hmm. talked about and she rhymed his last name with magazine. Ah, yeah. Okay. And yeah. and she she also included the anecdote that she she sang it to him one day and he's like, I never thought about that <laughs> 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 because he's always had to correct people. Mm-hmm. So. So, yeah, you just think about how it is. It, it rhymes with magazine. So gal galazine galazine. Okay. But I'll I think that. more yeah. emphasis on a T. But I don't know. I don't know, because he he is like if you had told me. Noah dropped out and they replaced him with Nicholas. I would be like, that makes perfect sense because at mm-hmm. this rate, the number of movies, like straight to streaming movies too, that this man has been in yeah. over the last year or two. And and I guess not all straight to see um streaming because he was in the movie Bottoms as well that came out last year in theaters. Yeah. Um he he just is all over the place and he's getting that that burst that that Noah got a few years back when everyone was diehard over the all the boys I loved um series on Netflix and then okay. he suddenly became like Netflix's it boy mm-hmm. and and then all of a sudden those projects were not to all the boys I love. <laughs> and, and Netflix was like, oh, we see how it works, but but Nicholas, he also, I don't know if he's going to have that, that same path because he's not doing, like, his roles are very different <laughs> all over the place. Because he's also on, he's also on, I want to say it's a star series right now with okay. uh, Julianne Moore. Huh. Um, and it's, and it's um, Victorian, I think, like, Henry, and it's very gay. 
Okay. I just know that. I just know that's very and and there's this whole relationship. But but yeah, so the, so the bit of news <laughs> that I like divulge <laughs> all of Nicholas's like his IMDb. <laughs> I am not on that <laughs> page all the time. I just I he just came out of nowhere for me yeah. and suddenly there's all this stuff. Yeah. Um, but he um has recently been cast, I guess, to join Noah in the live action movie Masters of the Universe. So. Yes. Yeah. So and this this live action film, so the Netflix version died away. So Noah is no longer happening. So Nicholas will be uh, is going to be He Man slash Prince Item in this But I uh, thought you just told me that Noah was part of this. No, no, no. You just asked if that was the same one, and I was like, it was a, it's the same. It's, it was a, a live action version that was going to be produced by Netflix, but this one is going to be produced by Amazon, and it's going to be um, re- released theatrically in twenty. They're aiming for twenty twenty six. Okay, so listeners, like after you're done listening to this episode, just just tweet at at Will or me. Who, like, are you on my side of this debate or on his? Because I, <laughs> I don't think I asked the question wrong, but <laughs> I don't know if I was given the right answer. No, um, no, I, I just assumed that you thought, eh, maybe I should have clarified at that point that it was a Netflix one, but I didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah, but, okay, so, but the net was, okay. So are there, are there two movies or one movie? It's just the one movie. The Netflix project is gone. So, so there was a movie. There, there, they were doing a live action with Netflix and with Noah. That right. is now died. And Correct. now MGM, which go figure, because Nicholas is now um, Amazon's it boy. Yep. He he is um, he is doing been cast as He Man for the Masters of the Universe. Okay, well. <sighs> <laughs> and the reason why I thought I, I re- the only reason why I put this on here is because you mentioned the idea of you. Um, oh, I know why you put it on it. here. I'm yeah, not. I'm yeah. not questioning it being yeah. on here. I'm yeah. just. I'm like. I. I love how you let me go on like this four minute tirade, <laughs> and and it turned out I completely misunderstood what was happening, and then and I was yeah. enjoying it. I was enjoying well, it. <laughs> well, I know because, because this is what you want. You want me to like read these things, and it's clearly I don't know anything these days. Um, but man, yeah. uh, oh, so so I did I did finish one thing this week, okay. um, which shouldn't be a shocker to anybody, but it was Vanderpump Rules season eleven. Oh, um, which okay. aired its its uh, th- third part of the reunion last night. Um, and and it's, it's so it's just so funny to me how um how public opinion changes so quickly um and and it's just it's just interesting like the mm. favorites of last year are not necessarily the favorites of this year but uh. no I'm not I'm not also not suggesting that Tam, Tom Sandoval is is a favorite. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, yeah. So did he rehabilitate himself? I mean, it's like, no, wow. no. Okay. They tried. Okay, okay. But, but the big thing was Ariana is smart and she knew what what was going on. Um and so she didn't play ball. But uh-huh. what what she did not calculate was that her her friends from last year, her like or the people who were supporting her during the breakup and everything, all of the girls will suddenly would, would look at her with jealousy and, and annoyance and just be like, no, 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 we, we do this. We talk to our exes. We, we put our air, our dirty laundry. You have to too. But, and, and maybe it's just because social media, like it is an, it is algorithm driven. So, I'm already a fan on team Ariana. So my algorithm will only send me stuff like that is in support of her. But I have yet to see anything where people like disagree. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, they disagree to some things like she should have watched the season. 
but I also understand why she didn't. So like it is what it is. Yeah. So, but, but I'm also, but majority of the people are like with how all of her, her actions over the course of the season, from what I can tell, majority of the audience are on her side and which, which is just interesting how that alienates her from majority of her cast. Mm. So, so, but the word on the street now is because they're not picking up cameras anytime soon. They typically would starting in June. Right, um, right. That, that, and the way it ends, it's kind of like, okay, so is this the last, like, is this really the series finale? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, but, but I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think they would have made it much more clear that it was. Oh yeah. I think they are just letting, because, because Ariana has some projects in the works right now because she's doing Love Island and then she's going back to Broadway to do another oh. stint on Chicago. Okay. Um, because earlier this year she was there um, and she did like record breaking performances mm. oh. for like a long running Broadway play to suddenly be brought in as the lead and then like break records. It's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think they're waiting for that stuff to calm down and then we're going to do a, you haven't seen these guys in a while, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. here's what they're up to. But I don't, and then kind of get a feel as if like, does it, is the audience willing to continue with this group of quote unquote friends? Or it's like, no, it's too obvious these days that these people, they may know each other. They may pop into each other's lives, but they are definitely not the group of friends we were introduced to like back in season one. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just because of the, the drama um, and the deceit and all of that. I think it's honestly because the premise of the show started as these people all work in a restaurant. Well, you work together. Of course, you're going to spend so much time together. Yeah. Yeah. They don't all work in the same place anymore. So you really have to, you are really having to suddenly become real life friends. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just, I think it'll, I think it'll be interesting because Bravo's never one to like kill a revenue stream, but then again, has been a lot of, um, dis dislike for how this season unfolded and, um, just, just the, the obvious the 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 uh the obvious tv making that was occurring that mm. we hadn't seen in previous seasons mm. yeah I, I will say I, I did fall off this season because i started out watching it and then it just i think to your point it, it did get that script it did even though it was supposed to be unscripted and everything it did start to feel a little i don't know stale <laughs> and I just, yeah, I, I never, I never got back on that, on the track. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was, it's, which I knew, I knew going into it, it's never going to be what season 10 won because season 10 was just a very rare lightning in the bottle moment for reality television. Yeah. Yeah. Where you're rewatching something, knowing something that occurs months later and then trying to find the pieces that's like, oh, well, why was it like, like it was, it was a version of Clue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was like, who did it? How did this happen? And and they had all of the pieces because they had all this footage. So, so it's never gonna be that again. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so so I just wanted to put that out there in case cool. anybody who was wondering because you know our previous discussions about the show when i'm a long oh, diehard yeah. fan i've been yeah yeah i mean this time last year yeah we were we were deep and uh deep in banner pump <laughs> and i just want to make sure listeners realize like i i do not when will suddenly watches something that i say i'm watching he he just he, i never ask him okay <laughs> 
He yeah. just wants to be included. He gets FOMO so easily. <laughs> I, I I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, is- see, yeah, you know, to, you know, to an earlier conversation this evening, it's like you see things kind of trending and, be, you know, but the water cooler talk and it's just like, I, I feel like I'm missing the party. So, yeah. <laughs> But it's so funny to me because you remind me of my dad, except my dad, he never, he, he'll he never actually watch the things. And nine times out of 10, I'll actually preface when I bring up um, something I'm watching to him and say, I know you're never going to watch this. Actually, I don't want you to watch it, but I have to just explain to you <laughs> what is happening. And then he'll he'll be all interested and he may or may not go and watch it. Again, mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, he will not watch it. And um, in the rare cat case that he does, he'll come back to me and say, "It was just more interesting when you were explaining." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, technically, yes, because I also like no show goes through extended periods of time like at high intensity. Like it's yeah. really hard to maintain that. So there's there's like peaks and valleys." So, but when you're explaining and trying to get somebody to understand, like, something that was mind-blowing, you're going to only pick the the peaks <laughs> to yeah, tell them exactly, about. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of, uh, yeah, what we're, I know we're going to talk about X-Men here, but it's sort of like what, our discussion about it last week in episode five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That that was a really good discussion, and I think it's... um very relevant as we start to get into the last thra- the last three episodes of X-Men 97, um, which are the final episodes of this season. Um, but I just, you know, it's a curse and blessing to have an episode where it just sticks out and and later episodes reference it. You just, you're like, and I think I explained this, um, talked about this during our top 10 last year when I was talking about our top five TV shows where I brought up Succession. I'm like, Mm -hmm. Succession is number three on my list. I'm pretty sure it was number three. It could have been number two, but I'm, no, I think Last of Us was number two. Yeah, Last of Us was number two and The the Bear was number one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and, And you were surprised by it and I... To, well, A, you were surprised because you had no idea what my number one was. But also, I, I explained, like, I had to put it at number three because was it a good season? Yes. Mm-hmm. Was there, there was one episode, though, that stuck out mm-hmm. to the point where, yeah, all the other episodes can be good. But they're, ne- like, that one peaked so high yeah. that you can't say that the overall season was like consistent because it's like, no, you had, you went from good to, Oh my God, that, that should be shown in, in film school Mm -hmm. to, to good, which Mm -hmm. it's not like there was a bad episode, which a lot of seasons have where it's like, what what was episode four that I strongly like Jubilee birthday episode of X Men? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no. More commonly, you have a really bad episode that kind of weighs down your average. And I think for X Men '97, because of the repercussions, but also because of just the overall storytelling that occurred in episode five, it is such a peak mm-hmm. that that it's really hard to go into these last three episodes and not compare and also not just be like, I wish this would hit a little bit harder for me. Like it did in episode five. Yeah. 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 I, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, these, the, the and I'm glad we structured our watch the way that we did to have these to go ahead. Since it was designed to be a three part finale. Um, yeah. And and I'm glad we stuck to that um, as far as watching them in a bunch. Um, but you're right. I mean, I think episode ten. Um, just to jump to, to to just to further your point, did it, it, yeah. I mean, it, it was solid. I mean, this was a solid season overall. I mean, it, mm-hmm. but um, I can't you know I, we've watched lots of shows and, and over the years and. 
you know, I, I will say I, I, I leave season one of X Men ninety seven feeling very satisfied. Um, it 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 met expectations. And in some ways it exceeded expectations because I was watching it from, you know, whenever we first started talking about the show, you know, I definitely had the bits of nostalgia uh, and, and thinking about this show, but it, it it took the nostalgia and then and it added to it, you know, being something with something fresh and different. And, and I, and I, and I think these, these last three episodes really captured not only the fallout, of what happened in episode five with Genosha, but um, it 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 did do the job of hitting the landing, but also doing a good springboard to things for season two. Right, right, and it all goes back to episode eight. They just starts yeah. off tolerances extinction part one, which the next three episodes you get part one part two part three and and i agree like the overall how we ended up viewing this entire season i think was only to our benefit as much as we were talking last week about how those four episodes was it was a roller coaster yeah. <laughs> yeah. it yeah. still helped us get to the the um the smooth ending so to speak um yeah. I'm just trying to figure out what happens in the first. Part. Yeah, I mean, basically, we, you know, one of the things that whenever we were, we were, what, we got a question answered. Who was Bastion? Yeah. Uh, because I wasn't familiar with it, but I, I will say, you know, so we do get the, um, we get the grand plan. We, you know, we get as far as who the true big bad is. It wasn't Mr. Sinister, but it was, ba- you know, Bastion. Uh, Sebastian is, you know, his real name, and and uh, you know we learned that he. You know, what I liked about with this, his origin story, it was like, yes, he's an, he's a, he's a mutant himself, but you know, but I don't, but he he also um, also is you know creates some prime sentinels who and affect them with the you know the virus that sentinel. Mr. Sentinel came up with, Mr. Sinister came up with, and, you know, to, to create these ultimate, these ultimate weapons that the X-Men can't, you know, can't defeat because, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're not the mental, mental, mental Sentinels that we're so used to seeing, but these are, you know, people who, uh, some who volunteered and, and some who were unwittingly uh, created, you know, in his hometown, um, and his own mother. <laughs> right. Where he's like right. Prime he Sentinels. basically yeah. created human sentinels. Yeah. Because he infected the same virus that gets infected, that Nathan gets infected with. Yeah. 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 And he, and you're right, like it was interesting the further it went on to realize that he was mutant too because he can um, basically control electronics, yep. computers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's not Magneto, but it's kind of a different, another version of Magneto, if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, which, <laughs> like, I just, I keep thinking about that tweet you sent me earlier this week about someone pointing out, like, the 10 or the 5, like, m- almost always uh, storylines of oh, yeah. <laughs> And it's just like, yeah. And, and I think maybe that's where... I don't know why, but, and, and I've listened to people talk about this show, like do full reviews now that I've seen the final three episodes and a lot of people are on your side, Will, and which I'm not surprised by because I don't know, I still have yet to articulate or pinpoint exactly why as much as I like the nostalgia um, and can appreciate things uh, and aspects about this show. I still have to be honest, and it and nothing hit me the same way. Mm-hmm. Where where I'm finding like I have to have people talk about it and be like, oh, I never thought about it that way, or I yeah. don't know. It just it just didn't. I, I guess in a weird way, I, I I'm kind of reluctant to say this, but in a weird way, I'm just like. For whatever reason, I did not find that watching the show to be fun. <laughs> I don't know why. I think and, it's the, yeah. 
Go ahead. And Go ahead. I don't know. I think a part of it is just because even though this is the original series aired in 97, there has been so much X-Men content since then that's been mm-hmm. live action. And and for the most part, I mean, up until like the Phoenix saga, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I definitely stopped after that. I was like, no, there's no yeah. way I'm doing that. I know that's just going to be bad. But so so maybe it's just a little bit of burnt out on yeah. on these characters and also just the the storylines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, th- that that's a very fair point. And two, I mean, the X-Men, it is an allegory. I mean, with some of the things that they're dealing with, you know, with in, in the prejudices. Because, I mean, for example, in, in episode eight, I mean, we're seeing, you know, we see... Um, when Magneto is uh, captured there, and and you know they they it is they do like show us his his Nazi tattoo from when he was in the concentration camp, so they get to his background, right? And 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 the whole Genosha thing. I mean, it's you know this is not this is not your kids X Men <laughs> as far as you know. Well, you, no, you, but you, there was so much of that in X Men First Class. True. That when I when I when I was watching those scenes, my mind went back to that movie. Yeah, and maybe that's your, and that's a good point that you raised there earlier about being burnt out. I mean, I think, yeah. um, but because I I was too. I mean, I haven't. I mean, I, I did get burnt out with X Men my, myself, and sort of, and, um, you know, so even though whenever we saw that this series was coming, um. You know, I was excited for it, but at the same time, I, you know, I think we both collectively decided to like, let's just stick the plan. We don't need to like shift course. We'll get to it after we get through, you know, the things that we were watching earlier this year. But I think this episode, you know, I, I, I did like I did like the way episode eight sort of just sort of started to pull some of the threads together. You know, especially how uh, I can't remember her name, but the um, the. Um, woman who uh, was supposed to be the ally but then of course she was like the you know the un the unwitting collaborator to well, um, well there was her and then there was yeah. the news person who mm-hmm. was flirting with beast who turned out yeah. to be one of them so yeah. i mean i know who you're talking about and i'm sure our listeners who watch the show do too um about the unwilling um ally who we've seen throughout the season too um yeah, I, I like all of that. I did get a little bit, and it was weird, um, and you're going to hate this because it's one of your least favorite episodes we've ever covered on this show, but I had a weird flashback to that zombie episode in The Flash yeah. when everyone started turning into sentinels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just had this like weird, like, oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I just, my mind went there for some reason, and yeah. I barely watched that episode, and you turned it off. So. I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but but it it was it was a very well structured, like real dedicated episode to um to breaking down the villain, yeah. only for him to I I, I felt like. Because they, there's always two villains. Because if Magneto's there, mm-hmm. he'll always be a villain. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. A frenemy, if you will. It's just, it's just Magneto. So, so yes. then they were able to really turn their attention in episode nine to making sure we we realize how much of a threat still Magneto is, and how all of these events are making him turn against what he originally came to the x-men um to be essentially yeah yeah. Um, yeah yeah and they and to your point i mean they do set you know they do well it was one of those like he was like the he was a hero he was he, he's truly the, he's a villain but also in some regards some weird anti-hero too because it's like magneto was right and it, you know he gets into the, again the whole philosophical debate between you know Charles and and Eric as far as which path to go, and 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 as 
the way they set this thing up, yeah, it, it you know, it's like, and I have to, say, I have to admit, I was kind of like, you know, <laughs> Eric wasn't wrong about what he was thinking here. <laughs> no, no, and and I think that's always why, despite how it's overplayed, been overdone, and we've seen it so many times before, the core at the core of the X-Men is the the philosophical differences between Charles and Magneto. Yeah. Like, like, and you can't deny it. Yeah. Um, and the more you understand their friendship, the more you understand how they become enemies. And then also at the end of the day, how, how they, they will always be each other's biggest adversaries because like, as as much hate and annoyance there is, there's also also this love because they were friends mm-hmm. first. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure like there's fan fiction. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they were friends first. Yeah, I, I know I can read between the lines. I, I get it. <laughs> um but but so so and and I think I think they did a good well or a good job. Man, I can't talk right now. They get a, did a good job in um, making the viewers see that because they purposely didn't have Professor X in like the first six episodes. Yeah, yeah. So, so you really got to see a different side um, to Magneto. Mm-hmm. Um, much like the X Men themselves did, yeah. Which and maybe it would be, maybe it would have been a little bit more interesting had it not just been Rogue and uh, Starboy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sunspot, yeah. Sunspot. sunspot, Sunspot, Sunspot. Yeah, Roberto. To, yeah. To side with Magneto um, yeah. when he decides that. Well, and in, and in Magneto's defense, like he also. Like, what other choice was there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, they were they were going down, going down pretty quickly. So he pulled the plug. Okay. He had to. He had to pull the plug. Yep. And, and so, and so I get it. He could have turned it back on, but he, he a bit stubborn. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little Just bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> so, I mean, he was right. <laughs> yeah. He was right. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's, 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 been more to tell y'all for years, and then finally he was like, "You, you y'all fucked around, and you found out." <laughs> right, right, yeah. and and it's and I mean, you have Magneto, who who basically wants to uplift the mutants, mm-hmm. um, despite hum, hum, humans, yeah. um, and views humans as lesser, but that's not. And as similar as it may seem, that's not necessarily the same philosophy that is going on with Bastion as he himself. He's more like, no, how do I make humans the superior race? Yeah. Like, how do and and in a way, he just built an army of himself. Mm-hmm. So so in a way, he pulled a fallout. Yeah. <laughs> pull the fallout if you will um and just and just wanted to create more like him so it was it was a similar ideology but but that one difference between um how 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 quote-unquote whatever coexistence Mm -hmm. means Mm -hmm. in these um but he just wanted to make everyone like him so that so that like "Quote unquote humans, which would really be turned into sentinels, would be superior than even mutants. Yep. Um, yeah. Because at this rate, mutants are out going to start outnumbering um, humans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a really good summation of like of, of episode nine. Um, of, you know, of course, we do get some other things that that did happen in the episode of course and and sprinkled all throughout these we were getting some um um you know cameos and easter you know of of various other uh, you know various marvel characters which again also helped to to show how big this world is 
um, and, and but also um, you know we you know we do get two critical thing you know things happen. Of course, Storm is back; she gets reunited with the team, and uh, and 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 and, uh, and of course at the end there we we do see uh, Magneto uh, ripping the uh, at the uh, uh, Wolverines at the and at, at the Neum. I can't. I always get that. I can't. I never pronounce that word. But uh, his his metal, his skeleton out of him and uh, putting him in a critical condition. So, um, which was, which was, um, you know, inspired by one of the events in the comics. And then of course also we just got the just the very cool the OG costumes uh, that 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 the uh, that, I, I just thought that was a pretty cool touch that they added in the in the show. Not gonna lie, I hated the OG costumes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I kept because those those costumes are not the costumes that I remember. So the whole yeah. time I'm like, what the heck are they with? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I remember some of those from like the Chris Chris Claremont days, uh, whenever he was uh, whenever he was on the on the in the comic yeah. book, so so, so John Byrne, yeah. <laughs> just to rewind a little bit to go back yeah. to the comedy cameos because I just want to point this out because it was the one that stuck out the most to me. They even incorporated Cloak and Dagger. I saw that. I thought about this as soon as I saw them. I was like, hey. <laughs> yeah, Dandy yeah. And Tyrone. Yes. Which, man, we were we were getting into that series and then they they just canceled it. Yep. I understand ratings were low. But um, but yeah, like I saw that and I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to see where that one goes. We're just gonna yeah. see it. Um, so yeah, that that was. I I like that. I like how yeah we saw the the big guys, the guys mm-hmm. we all know in Marvel, but yeah. we also saw saw glimpses at at some of the some of the understories. I mean, there there was a lot more Daredevil than I yeah. thought there. But then again, knowing daredevil is coming back in march it kind of makes sense why there was so much yeah um so so spider saw spider-man the, from the you know from that animated from the that also ran contemporaneous with the uh, original x-men animated series um and, it, and they were in the same universe so of course uh, they are it, yeah yeah because they had a little crossover back in the day on the, with those with that sh- with two two cartoons so yeah I mean, it was just it was even dr doom showed up i was like oh yeah like, all right yeah yeah feige <laughs> feige had a heyday with that yeah, so. he did, Which, yeah. it is cool to see him his name in the credits because i'm yeah. just like okay even though i know this show is not working the way it should be and the way it is for others I still like seeing his name. I'm like, okay, just have like he's still there. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> he can bring it. He can still bring it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, because what of comfort? Like I understand yeah. these days, the MCU does not have the track record in its heyday. Totally yeah. agree with that, and understand that. But at the same time, for whatever reason, I there's still something where I'm just like, there's a bit of comfort. That I see, yeah. um, where when I see a bad MCU movie, I'm just I also probably tell myself subconsciously, Feige had nothing to do with that. He took a vacation <laughs> during the time, like he did not see the script. That went yeah. to like number two guy who then got fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was during the Bob J. Pick era where every you know where poor Kevin was like this, this, you know, too many things going on at once, so he yeah. couldn't. He could, yeah, <laughs> he delegated. Yeah. He delegated the middle management. They they screwed it up. You can't but do yeah, everything. That, can't do everything. But yeah, but you're right. It was like it was a comfort because even I did. You know, speaking of the heyday of the MCU, for example, even though it was very predictable in, in some regards that Rogue would be one of the ones who would go side with Magneto because of all what had transpired. Uh, I, you know, the whole people choose the sides and stuff i did uh, as i was watching it i did kind of smile a little bit thinking back to civil war and oh I, yeah yeah because there was even that moment with captain america yeah. in one of these episodes where i, I yeah. immediately had a flashback to civil war yeah um and and so again it's it's almost that it's not just that they leaned on um the original series nostalgia but just the mcu as a whole which has yeah. built up 
its own nostalgia over the decades that it's been building this universe. Yeah. And yeah. and the one thing I want to bring it up um, that I don't even think I put in my notes, but man, if you don't think I'm going to bring this up, then nobody, you didn't listen last week. But who was right or who was wrong? I told you they were not going to address the fact that Rogue killed someone. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Will was telling me, no, 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 there's going to be consequences, repercussions. Hey. Based on, and I'm like, no, no, they're not going to address it. <laughs> and I know <laughs> season two, they could. But yeah. for, as of right now, they have not, which uh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. I was wrong. I thought I, I thought we would get resolution to it sooner. But uh, you're right. It'll It'll most likely be season two or three. <laughs> yeah, if it's season three, I still think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, yeah. The statue of limitations for addressing something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're still waiting for we're still waiting for one division, so <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well. yeah. Seriously. It's just <laughs> be, when things happen and nobody goes back to it, man, it sticks out like a sore. Yeah. Or, oh, my goodness. Um, I, you know, the um, episode 10, I, I fell asleep a little bit uh, because I'm just, I'm just not an action person. And um, it's very hard for me to, at this point, really be engaged in a third party end of the world Blah, blah, blah. But I have to be honest, the, uh, while watching it, um, just because there was an asteroid mm -hmm. for some reason, and I think somebody talked about the dinosaurs at one time, my my mind went straight <laughs> to Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> because there's a line where Arnold Schwarzenegger says something about the Ice Age, like, and all of the freaking puns and that. And I'm just like, no, no, because <laughs> there was there was a point in this episode where there were so many different puns that I'm like, no, these are these are not. No, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, I, 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 I agree. It, it was the episode 10. While I really, really did enjoy it. I didn't fall asleep on it or anything. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there was, a, there was a lot of action. And of course we already talked about the, all the, all the cameos that we saw, but, um, what, but at the end, I, I like the way that it started because as we were discussing earlier about Charles and, and, uh, Magneto's friendship, mm -hmm. um, I, I did, I did like that. I did like the, how it challenged our view of charles because you know at the end of the day he was like look i don't want to have to force myself on you but in order to save the day he had to compromise his ethics and his moral compass to do the very thing he said he wasn't going to do and I, I did like them going into that um you know especially knowing their friendship knowing how they had it fallen out and 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 the, the the sheer power of these two omega level mutants like merging like this, uh, which you know I think you know comic readers will, will know that you know that that uh, onslaught is the was a character in the comic books that whenever Charles and Magneto combined, I mean that was was a villain and 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 part of the X Men's comic book series, so. Yeah, so all of that together, uh, uh, that was really the underlying ethical issues that were sort of at play there were really something that I was just like, huh, all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that that was, you know, and, and you know, because everybody just lionized as Charles and, you know, and he's always trying to do the right thing. But even he, it reaches a point where he has to, like, bend the rules. He right. recognizes that he has to do it. Um, so, yeah. 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 No, no, that that was good. I, I. Again, it's hard for me. For some reason, I didn't. It's I don't know. I'm just I'm just. Even though it's an interesting dynamic and everything, I'm just always like Charles, a good guy. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Matter what he does, I'm like at the end of the day, yeah, he can do like a bad thing, but he also did it to a quote unquote semi villain. So, yeah. so yeah, yeah, he's right. <laughs> It's just yeah. so weird. It's so weird. Yeah. But what I liked was was there was that whole moment where Charles was trying to convince him about people and and stuff, and like they they flashed to that image of Rogue in a boat. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Which did make me think of Three Body One Problem yeah. because of that whole yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I do. And um. And but like in an instant when he's like, oh, like Rogue can be that person. And then I love how like within the span of a second, he just was like, but she left me. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> yep. but it's, it's very funny to me the way you just like, oh, Rogue, but she left me. And I'm like, yeah, she left you in Genosha. And then you self-sacrificed yourself for her. So I just, where are you at with this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where are you at with this? And um, so so let's let's talk about the after credit scene. Because yeah. I was smart. And and I checked and I was like, oh, I see, I see they're doing, they're doing that. Um, and, and there isn't a mid or an after credit scene, whatever you would call it, um, which basically we get, we get a fast forward to six months since quote unquote E-Day happened mm -hmm. and rumors swir are still swirling about the fate of the X-Men. Um, Bishop is back. Yep. And he greets Forge, who was on Earth, and so he's still one of the survivors and trying to find his goddess, yep. aka Storm. Yep. And yep. um and and Bishop and and him are gonna are gonna go out and try to find the X Men because in the future they're BFFs forever. So apparently yep. or something. Yep. So they're, they're at least more than acquaintances. They know. Yeah, they time. are. Yeah, They're they know back. each other, and you know, and also Cable uh, is still there in present day. So you know, so yes. I know Cable and Forge, uh, you know, form X Force. So yes, and then we get we get to see where the X Men are, yeah. and they're and everyone's a bit spread out in different places, but there is one common figure in these places. Um, and I'm not going to say that first name, so I'm just going to go straight to N. Sabanor. <laughs> N. Sabanor. Um, and I'm not ashamed to admit, I was like, that name sounds awfully familiar. Cut to five seconds later when it's clearly Apocalypse. And, Apocalypse, yep. And Genosha ever dead. I'm like, yep, I knew it sounded familiar. I just couldn't place it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, yep. We got past, present, and future. <laughs> yep, yep. And then we have Mother Azokni. Exogni? Escani? Escani? Yeah. And now now who is she? So, spoiler alert for folks, um, if you don't want to know. But she is a Summers. A what? She's she's uh, Scott Summers' daughter. Interesting. Uh, Cable's yeah, Cable's her brother. Yeah. So yeah, that's who she is. That's who she is. Okay, interesting. So, yeah. so they're in the future, correct? Because that is that who Scott and Jean encounter. Yeah. Because and then and then it's who encounters and Sabanier in the past. Uh, that is Storm. Magneto and, and, yeah. and Storm. Yeah. Where's Rogue? Rogue is still in present day. Rogue is still in present day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so we have we have oh, a she, team in the past. Oh yeah, Nightcrawler's also in the past. Nightcrawler's in the past, and then we have Team Summers in the future. Right. We have team. Okay. We have we have Xavier team in the past. Summers in the future. Mm -hmm. Is it just Gene and Cyclops in the future? Um. Now, I'm trying to remember if Rogue was a part of them or not. With them or not, I think Rogue was still in present day hmm. with uh, with Roberto. Did they, or or did she go with them too? I can't remember. See, uh, for some reason, well, uh, I don't know because at one point, 
Uh, for some reason, I feel like she's in in one of like she's not in present day. Yeah. But but viewers or listeners, let us know. Let yeah, us I know. Can't, and and yeah. we're gonna go back and and probably yeah. see her. Oh, Rogue, actually, Rogue, actually, I just, I just look, Rogue. So Magneto, Rogue, Nightcrawler, Beast, and Savior are all sit back in time. Okay, that makes more sense because yeah. I don't know why the writers would separate Magneto and Rogue at this point. Right. And so it's really just Scott and Jean in the future. Scott, Jean, yeah, because Cable's still Cable's still a present day. Yeah. Where's yeah. Jubilee? Um, I don't know. I can't recall. Well, well, don't know, don't care. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the team is divided. Yeah. And it makes sense considering if you look back at like at this the overall A storyline and B storyline mm -hmm. to have these these two groups to be where they are, it makes sense. And when we got our got our like cable cable uh bishop story right in the middle. So yeah. so yeah. it it's a very good setup for a season two. Yeah. Yeah. And and also taking the conflicts from this season or the unresolved items mm -hmm. um and allowing them to be brought forward while at the same time kind of starting the next chapter with everything right. and everyone. Yeah. Um but I will say I don't know if I'm ready for apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. I mean that was I know it's probably like wh what was it 2015 so it's been almost a decade since the the live action apocalypse movie came out correct me if I'm wrong 2016 sounds, maybe sounds about right yeah it sounds about yeah. right yeah so it's just it just feels soon very soon because that did not go well <laughs> <laughs> that was not in the upper echelon. I think, yeah, I, but I think by that one I had already I had already built on the series. So yeah, it was, <laughs> I mean, and and they even had Oscar Isaac do it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, like I, it's so interesting to me the movie stars who you 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 see them in these roles and you're like, man, he can play everything. And then you pull out the book and he's like, well, he tried. Yeah. Do you not recall this movie? I mean, he was in apocalypse and then he, he did uh, the beloved MCU series that I'm blanking on moon. Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Yeah. Moon Knight. Yeah. 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 Which, which is another one that I don't know yeah. that I, I guess everybody was mixed on. But yeah, you and me were really, really not feeling that show. We weren't feeling it at all. We, yeah. <laughs> and I guess I think, I think moving forward, I think they're going to rechristen that one under the whole spotlight uh, banner. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure because I, I don't, I, I can only imagine Oscar Isaac's rate continues to just grow up, like, yeah. Grow. yeah. <laughs> so. yeah there, there's not going to be a season two of that one. No. I may eat my words, but. But yeah, give him They'll his, replace give him, him with Nicholas Galzine. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're right about apocalypse and just yeah, you know, and whether or not it's too soon, but also just sort of setting things up, especially you know, as you as you know, we we got the the mid credit and then of course the, I guess end credit there um, was the uh, with the, you know seeing the Gambit card and 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 everything there, you know, so. That's a, that's another thing that I don't know how to feel about that because if they do bring him back next season, I guess it'll all depend on how yeah. like in season two, if they bring him back, how they bring him back and everything to see, to try to figure out how I feel about that because yeah. Because I was already like, I don't know about the stakes of this show, but they really killed him. Yeah. But now they're kind of teasing that they're going to bring him back. And it's like, okay, well, if you're going to bring him back, then I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if you can bring him back, then, you know, then the whole you know, cable can use his time travel magic to, like, save Genosha. I mean, and, and, you know, so it's just like. No, no, no. I, yeah. I see there's a line at one point, though. Yeah. Um, that alludes to what they were alluding to in WandaVision. Mm. 
Um, and I forget what they called it, called it in WandaVision, but there's there's a certain event. Oh, the Nexus events? A Nexus, yeah, I think it's or a Hex. Nexus event. Yeah. The way they talked about it just reminded me of the way they were talking about Nexus events in WandaVision. Yeah. True, true. Yeah, and I know they also have that Loki as well. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I think... I think that, again, could go back a few minutes, like Feige is, is here. And I don't, the, just the way they talked about it, there were, there were some words used where I'm just like, hmm, I feel like I know what kind of thing you're referring to, which makes me accept this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As, because... Yeah. Because and I don't think th- I don't think it would be a smart move to play that card because that doesn't make Cable as tragic of a character as he could be given his abilities. Yeah, yeah like true. if you can travel back in time, well, you could fix so much. Um, but but if like it suddenly becomes more of a curse, like yeah, but I yeah. can't fix this one thing. Um, despite my ability, like I could save all these others, but the one person I really want to save, I can't. Yeah, yeah. Save Madeline, it, that, yeah. That, yeah. that reminds me of what if with Doctor yeah. Strange, like mm-hmm. him trying to to use his powers to, yeah. to change um, his, his own fate, and it's just right. like yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, I guess that, that makes sense too because the Watcher was overseeing things when that whole thing went down in Genosha, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah he Thank you. So. Yeah, that's another reason why it definitely is more likely to be a Nexus event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, on that note, um, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there too at SJ Belmont, SJBLMOT. Please follow our crew on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>